Hello, my wonderful viewers. Welcome to my platform. This is Linda's TV show. If it is your first time of coming across this channel and you like what you see, after watching, please subscribe, put on your notification bell, set it to all notification. In that way, you'll be able to get notified each time I upload a new video, even those without notification. Here we react to all forms of videos, international and local. Every Saturday by 2 p.m. we have our interaction section. You are free to call in to air your opinion about the happenings in our society. Invite your friends, share my videos with your families and colleagues. Do not keep this information to yourself. Myself, I will be sitting down here to watch this video together with you from the beginning to the end. Then we'll go to the comment section and leave our comment, our opinion about the video we we'll watch constructively as we watch this video, my people. Anybody telling you about one Nigeria is your enemy? I prove it to you now. Ujuku negotiated devolution, regionalism. The North will be on their own, the West on their own, even Middle Belt on their own, sorry, Midwest on their own, and then the East on their own. It's the same one Nigeria. On, on their way to the airport, before they boarded the aircraft, a call came from Lagos, from the British High Commissioner in Lagos, to go on, telling go on not to agree. After having signed the agreement, that same go on you're looking at today god kept me alive so that he can witness the destruction he will bring upon that very zoo called nigeria go on said no do you know all the journalists in nigeria none of them have ever gone to has ever gone to go on to ask him why did he say no to aburi aburi was restructuring none of those agitating for restructuring right now has ever gone to go on or gone to nigeria to say that ujuku negotiated restructuring what happened they came back and they said no. Ujuku said, okay, so you want to continue to kill my people all over the place? No! Because of that, I'll declare Biafra. Today, they have brainwashed all of you with the perverse notion and thinking that somehow Ujuku is responsible for causing a war when opposite is the case. If not now, that after many years of hammering on this very topic, it has now sunk into the skull of the people. That go on was the aggressor, not to you. That's how Nigeria is. Always blaming the victim. And we lost over 5 million people during that very genocidal war. They killed over 5 million Biafrans. They wanted to wipe us away from the face of this very earth. But we survived it. And we are here today. Those they gave birth to, they have come. And this time with a wrath that you cannot even begin to imagine. And Biafra must come. It must come. Two things are bothering the zoo right now. You know, when God wants to destroy a nation, it comes in many ways. One, Buhari is dead. They brought in a fake. It is now dawning on the people very slowly that there is no more Buhari. It's, people are now beginning to rise. It. What I find astonishing are people that they claim are stakeholders in the zoo, those who should know better, those who should be, who should be, should I say, lead this very campaign to uncover the truth. They're all running away. They're all hiding. Do you know why they're hiding? Because the people talking about a late dead Buhari are those that oil and gas comes from their region. And they all think that they need oil and gas to survive. That is why they're all quiet. If not that Dino Malaya came out a few days ago, of course, Obasanjo said it. Even Aisha Buhari said it. But the husband is dead. They all pretended as if they didn't know. And we know that Buhari is dead. And when that very issue erupts the way and manner it would, later on in the coming weeks and months, the zoo cannot contain the fallout. That is number one. Number two is that everybody keeps talking about uh, there, is, there seems to be no government, there is no direction because Buhari is not there. That is why you have no direction. That is why the country seems to be drifting. That is why there is no sense of purpose. No cohesion. Because there is no Buhari. So what you have are competing interests and ideas from the Fulani cabal that is ruling the zoo. Ruling all of you. You know that that little boy is not Buhari. Everybody knows that. How many Buharis are you going to have? 
before you begin to reason and begin to think. When I said it, they say it was conspiracy theory, and I said with time, today people are coming out to confirm what we have always known. What we have always known, that Buhari is dead. That is why you have what is called a drift in the government. That is why there is no clear focus, there is no clear cut direction, not at all. If not that I talked about Aisha Buhari in my last broadcast, I wouldn't have brought her out today to speak. And she only issued a statement. Nobody saw her. She's in Dubai having fun with her boyfriend, your first lady. And I asked them, in whose reign or regime in Nigeria or anywhere else in the world do you have a first lady missing in office? Only in Nigeria. But you as a Nigerian cannot ask any questions because of the way you reason. The problem you have as a Nigerian is in your brain. The way you reason is flawed. Ask yourself this question. If this woman's husband is alive, what is she doing in Dubai? And with who in Dubai? Simple question. But you can't ask yourself that question because you're a Nigerian. Sometimes you don't reason very well. It is not meant to be an insult. I'm just telling you the fact of life. Buhari is not no longer alive. The various Fulani groups within, some are sponsoring terrorists from all over the place to come to your land to kill you. And you want to be in the same country with the same people that imported terrorists to come to kill you. I, I don't understand it. I, you see, I am struggling to understand how some of you reason. They call themselves your patriots. They say that you are Nigerians. Is that correct? Why would a fellow Nigerian go outside to the Sahel to pay people to come to kill you? They are fellow Nigerian. And after killing you, they say that those murderers and killers are now entitled to live in your forest and in your farmlands. Are all of you okay at all? Because I don't, I am struggling to understand how you people reason. The reason why I'm saying this is this. The, the gullible ones amongst you are the ones they are deceiving. They are deceiving all of you. And for some perverse reason, you tend to fall for it. But we have not fallen for it. And wonders shall never end. You saw the little boy that they were giving, they said they are giving him COVID-19 um, uh, vaccine. And I ask you in all honesty, there are pastors and truth tellers and men of God, I believe, in Nigeria. Look at the hand of that boy. You've seen the pictures and the videos everywhere. Is that the hand of an 80-year-old man? How can all of a sudden Usibajo is now older than Buhari? Look at the videos and look at the pictures. At this point, I begin to ask some of you, are you sure that your brain is working? Your brain cells is working? People say, oh, it is a conspiracy theory. All these things that you're saying about these people, and I'm saying to them, have you not seen the picture of Usibajo taking the so-called vaccine or malaria injection? I don't know. Look at the man they claim is Buhari. Look at his hand. Is that the hand of an 80-year-old man? Is Buhari richer than Bill Gates? Is Buhari richer than George Soros? George Soros is richer than the whole of Nigeria. Bill Gates, the same thing. So if it is money that, that, that caused this very old dying man to now turn into a 35-year-old man, how come... Bill Gates cannot do it, or George Soros, or even Queen Elizabeth for that matter. If they claim that the treatment that Buhari received that made him look this young was administered in, in London, the Queen is the Queen of England, the Queen of the United Kingdom. Why wouldn't she go through the same treatment? Why not? Why wouldn't Prince Philip go through the same treatment and become young again? That is how Nigerians and black people reason that give me cause for concern. If we continue this way, we can never ever build nor have any viable society, all of us together. And that is why it is very, very critical and very, very important that we do that which is right before God and man. And stop this from deceiving us. You are every head of state that took a vaccine all over the world. After taking the vaccine, they address their people. They spoke to the nation. Why is it that this one wearing an oversized face mask, of course, on top of Buhari, hyper-reality face mask, 
could not utter a word. Can't you ask yourself that question? He came to take his vaccine. Go and look at other heads of state. They take their own vaccine in public and they speak. This one is like a mannequin. He comes out, you will him out, and they do something and he goes back in again. That tells you that Buhari is no longer alive. Buhari is in a shallow grave in Saudi Arabia. He's dead. And that is why they're in a hurry. That is why this governor can say, I will not listen to Asorok. That governor will say, let's bring in more bandits. Let's settle them. That is why the government is disjointed and dysfunctional. Nobody's in charge. Obasanjo knows that nobody's in charge. I think he said that he may not agree that it's a Buhari double, but that the Buhari now in Asorok is not the one he used to know. How else do you want him to put it? He's been very prominent. He wants Nigeria to survive so that can, him and his friends can continue to enjoy oil money. That's all. Oil money. That's nothing more, nothing less. Just oil money. Just oil money. So they can continue to enjoy oil money flowing from Beffa land. That's all. Not that they love you. Not that they love one Nigeria. Of course not. They don't. Nobody does. These are the things that you ought to know. And that's what we're telling you this very day. The time now is seven minutes to the top of the hour, regardless of where you're all over the world. That tells you that we are live and we are direct. And this very gospel is coming to you so that you may change. You may have a change of heart. You may have a change of way of reasoning. Where is your first lady, Aisha Buhari? Where is she? She is not in the country. For how many months now? For how many months I ask of you? You claim you're a human being. When a white person is racist towards us, we start complaining. We don't like racism. But when they see the way we reason, they cannot help but be racist towards us. Can you believe that you have a country like the USA and Biden's wife decides to disappear for two, three, four months? You think Americans will keep quiet? You think that in a, in a, in a time of national crisis, of the of COVID-19 pandemic and and the ceaseless and endemic insecurity. You cannot even hear from somebody you claim is your president. And this was a man that when Youth Coppers visited him sometime in 2016, or was it in 2015, in his house in Katsina, he spoke against me, IPOB and their agitation. Without prompting, you think such a man will keep quiet in the face of what is going on right now. They all know. Wole is a, is, a, is a liar. They all know that Buhari is dead. Obasanjo is a liar. They know he's dead. Ojozo Kala and all the rest of them. They're all liars and deceivers. They know the idiot is dead. But all of you will keep deceiving yourselves. And that is why the Fulanis are killing you every blessed day. And when you rise up to fight against them, they become herders. When they attack you, they're headsmen. When you retaliate, they become herders. We don't want them in our land. The death of Buhari... And the, should I say, the, the relentless drive of the Janjaweed to conquer everybody else will make Nigeria a worse place than Somalia. And it's written. None of you can stop it. It doesn't matter how much you dialogue. It doesn't matter what you do. God has marked out Nigeria for destruction for what they did to his children. And all of you witness it. So that at the end of this very process, when Biafra comes, you give praise to God and to God alone and not to man. That's why we are here, to let you understand that the coming of Biafra is God's design, not that of man, not mine, not anybody else's. But that the time has come. We must stand very tall, very strong, and very resolute. I'm sure all of you have heard what Dino Malaya said. You have heard about that the president is in trans is transition or transmission. I don't, he's in transition because his body is in Saudi Arabia. He's not buried in Daura, not yet. His body is there. And that's why Aisha is, is upset with them. Aisha packed her things and went to UAE to live there. Because she told them, bring back the body of my husband. Give him a befitting better. They said no. They want to use the name of Buhari to conquer the rest of Nigeria. That's what they have done. But they have failed. And failed very, very woefully at that. And that is why this very truth must continue to be preached. If you have not seen it, go to my page. I think it is there. What do you know Malaya said? But I want to play what uh, a particular man said. And then I want to showcase the foolishness of your average Nigerian. The foolishness of Bishop Koka. I want to let the world understand how foolish a Nigerian is. Not from me. But I want all of everybody to listen to this very, very carefully, please. 
and tell me if Nigerians are not stupid. Listen. You have a confession that the media has not given appropriate attention. Yes, what is that? Kaubaraje Alaji. Alaji Kaubaraje. Was a leading chieftain of the APC. Yes. And he has confessed that they imported the foreign mercenaries who have become bandits. The APC imported foreign mercenaries. Baraje said it. Confessed. More evidence. What evidence do you need? Do you need? He has confessed. Mm -hmm. That they imported them for the elections. Yes. So, this is public. Mm -hmm. Why is the media not following up? Because Nigeria is corrupt. Why are we not asking for accountability? They can't ask because Nigerians are not intelligent. So They're not. it seems very clear to me mm -hmm. and to so many others. If you're in the public space, you hear people talking. Yes. And pointing fingers. The ruling party mm -hmm. is the direct sponsor of terrorism and insecurity in Nigeria. It was an interview granted by, by a so-called stakeholder in Nigeria. APC, the government, people are joining APC. I, I, you know, I don't want to speak against the Holy Spirit. At this point, I begin to say to God, there is no way a black man can be equal to a white man. It's impossible. You are aware. I don't know how to show it. This is the Mises High Reporters. I think I'll put it on my page after this. If you go to my page, you'll see it. The man spoke very brilliantly. Nobody has come to counter him. Baraje is alive. He opened his mouth and said, a part of APC said, we are the ones that brought them from the Sahel to come and kill you. They're fellow Nigerians. And after this, you say, I'm a Nigerian. That is why I say that anybody, if once you say you're a Nigerian, you're sick in the brain. I never have regard for you as a human being because that means you cannot reason. I will play this once again, uninterrupted, so you can hear him very, very well. And I'll start by asking him, I'm not going to ask him what he said. Who is responsible for the insecurity in Nigeria? Who is to blame? Listen. We have a confession that the media has not given appropriate attention. Yes. Go ahead. What is that? Kaubaraje Alaji. Alaji Kaubaraje. Was a leading chieftain of the APC. Chief of APC. He has confessed. He has confessed. Baraje. The foreign mercenaries who have become bandits. Oh, he has confessed. How much more evidence do you need? He has confessed that they imported them for the elections. Oh. This is public. Why is the media not following up? Why are we not asking for accountability? So it seems very clear to me and to so many others. Mm -hmm. If you're in the public space, you hear people talking mm -hmm. and pointing fingers. Mm -hmm. The ruling party is the direct sponsor of terrorism and insecurity in Nigeria. My name is Martin Onobo. I said it. Martin Onobo. The is the direct sponsor of insecurity and terrorism in Nigeria. Ask me for the evidence. Good. I just gave you confession of Kawu Baraje. Kawu Baraje, his confession is number one. Evidence. Number two. Number two evidence. Mileti Allah made a public statement mm -hmm. that if you want peace in your state, don't call any meeting. Mm -hmm. Provide land for Fulanis in your state. Ultimatum. From visitors. Yetiala. From terrorists. Yetiala is a collaborator with the uh, ruling party. Yetiala. We had a report that the ruling party funded Yetiala to the tune of a hundred billion. You say that? I wasn't there when the permanent payment was made. Mm -hmm. But 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 that's in the public domain. One Nigeria. An official report. <laughs> that the government of Nigeria was going to establish a radio station. Radio station for Yetiala. A terrorist group. In collaboration with Mieti Allah, we have Fufude, the Fulani uh, tribal dialect, will be the language of communication. Do you understand it? Now, they were saying, this is for Fulani people, sorry, for Hausa people. You know, all these years when they were conquering you, Hausa, they said, Hausa Fulani, we are Hausa Fulani. But now they feel they have taken you over. Now they feel that they are at the, at, the, at, the, at the cross of their conquest of Nigeria. They are now floating a radio station. No longer in Hausa language, but in their native Fulani language, Fufude. What does that tell you? 
as an average Nigerian, I, I wonder when, maybe is there something in the cow? You know, they have sex with cows and after that they sell it to us and we eat. Thank you so much for watching this video together with me. Like I said before, if it is your first time of coming across my YouTube channel and you like what I do, please subscribe, put on your notification bell, share this video, leave your comment in the comment section. You are free to criticize, but let us do it always constructively. Remain blessed. I appreciate your massive support and I love and cherish each and every one of you. Until I meet you again in my next video, for now I will say bye-bye.